Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is merge without extra space and it is a heart level problem. So they are saying that this problem of the day is July placement special. So all of the problems in this month of July will be based on popular interview questions. So I believe we will not be seeing many new questions. But yeah, we will be solving interview questions. And uh, for this particular problem, they say that we have been given two individually sorted arrays and we have to sort them overall without using any extra space. So basically, like let's say this particular array is sorted 1, 3, 5, 7 and this particular array is also sorted 0, 2, 6, 8, 9. So we have to place in this overall array the first n elements that are 0, 1, 2, 3. These elements should be in the first array and the remaining m elements 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 should be in the second array. So that like when we write them one after each other, so they will be become in sorted order like this 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right. So this is our whole task and we have to do this without using any extra space. So this situation is similar to the merging part of a merge sort algorithm. So normally you are allowed to create an extra array or temporary array of size n plus m. So that is not allowed here. That is the only constraint. And the time complexity mentions that it can be solved in n plus m log n plus m. But we are going to discuss a method which uh, can only solve it in n plus m in linear time. No need of this logarithmic part. So uh, for this particular problem, I have used this particular approach previously also in some of the problem of the day. And uh, if you have watched that particular video, you would be able to do it on your own. But if not, I will be I will tell you a method in which you can solve this particular problem in linear time. So first of all, we need to look at the constraints. So this constraint is uh, 10 raised to the power 7, right? So if we take about 10 raised to the power 7 and try to find the number of bits or in the binary representation of 10 raised to the power 7, it comes out to be around 24 bits, right? So we are going to do something with the bits and let us see what we can do. And before that, so I don't think that there is any need to explain the sample test case. But just in case, let me just explain you what this means. So you will see that we have an, two arrays here. So the first array is this one and the second array is this one, right? Now uh, let me just write all of those elements together 1, 3, 5 and 7 and 0, 2, 6, 8, 9. If I sort all of them, sort all of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this will be the final sorted array. So you have to pick the first n elements and put them in the first array and put, put the remaining elements in the second array. Right. This is what the question is asking. So you will see that array 1 is 0, 1, 2, 3 and the second array is uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So obviously you can uh, solve it in any way. You can also use extra space. There is no one stopping you. But if you want to solve according to the constraints of the problem, we will have a look at that particular approach. So the value of a of i is up to 10 raised to the power 7. So let's say that is approximately 24 bits and for even more approximation, let me just take it to be 25. So actually, if I try to calculate the number of bits in uh, 10 raised to the power 7, so we do log base 2 of 10 raised to the power 7, which is actually coming out to be 23 point something. So that is why I took this these two values. So for just uh, a round off, we are taking it to be 25. So let us say that we have 25 bits in our array elements, right? Each of the elements will have at most, at most 25 bits. So let's say these are some bits. I'm not drawing all 25 of them, but let's just say that this is the 25th of them, right? So this will not be number 25 because it will be 24. Right. Starting from 0, it should be 24. So overall, you will have 25 bits. So once you have these bits, right, if my input array is in long, long, right, if my input array is in long, long format, which it is, you will see when you uh, open the problem. So this long, long element will have total 64 bits, right. So there will be some bits, let's say to the left of it as well. 63 up to 63. So that means I can store some number in this particular half and I can store some number in this particular half. You see how I am carefully manipulating the bits to store two numbers at once. 
my each number that is the value of ai will only use at max 25 bits i will still have some more bits empty or some more bits set to zero which will never be used so why not use them to store a result so let me just repeat this part again so all of these ai will be stored in these bits and let's say starting from bit number 30 it will go till 54 i guess so these 25 bits are going to store my another number right you still you will see that still we have some bits remaining so what i did was 0 to 24 0 to 24 bits let's say this is some number x1 and 30 to 54 bits let's say this is some number x2 and uh, if you do 54 minus 30 plus 1 you will see that both of them have 25 bits so this number will have 25 bits and this number will have 25 bits and we still have sufficient space between them you see there is space between these numbers and there is space between these numbers right so even after taking two numbers which are of 25 bits we are still left with some space right so that means i figured out that i have a way to store two numbers in a single number right using the bits i can actually store two numbers x1 and x2 in any single index of the array so okay that, that means i can store two numbers but what is the actual benefit of storing two numbers so what i'll do is instead of creating a temporary array during the merge sort algorithm i created a temporary array right so instead of creating a temporary array i'll be storing all the answers in these array elements itself so normally we have three indexes i j and k you, during merge sort right so i traverses through the first array j traverses through the secondary array and k traverses through the temporary array right these are the three indexes that we generally have so now instead of uh, k traversing through a temporary array it will only traverse through array 1 and array 2 itself right so normally what we do is let me just write quickly write the normal merge sort algorithm and then i'll show you what updates are we going to do in it right so first of all we have three elements i is equal to j is equal to k is equal to 0 right all of them are initialized with 0 so why i is less than n and j is less than m so m is the size of the second array we make a simple loop right so what is inside this loop if if let's say array array 1 of i is less than array 2 of j right this is what we do if this is smaller then we update the element of the temporary array so let's say temporary array we have here temporary array k plus plus is equal to array 1 of i plus plus so what is happening is if array 1 of i is smaller than array 2 of j that means we are going to put the element in array 1 of i into temporary array right and i can use post decrement in both of them because i have to update i and j pointers now otherwise what i'll do is i'll update i'll still update the temporary array temporary of k plus plus and now i'll set it to array 2 of j plus plus right so this is a simple merge sort algorithm uh, there is some part after it as well for independently dealing i and j but let us not discuss that let us first focus on this particular part so you see that here what i am doing is i am storing all the values in a temporary array right but since i don't want to use a temporary array now i don't want to use this temporary array now i need some other space to store the same information as i have discussed that i can store two values x1 and x2 in a single array element so i will use this same information which i was storing in temporary array and store it in this particular position x2 right so if the value of k is less than n i am going to store it in array 1 because array 1 has a size of n otherwise i am going to store it in array 2 right so let me just write if and else so if k is less than n then array 1 of k position will be used otherwise array 2 of k minus n position will be used right so i hope that you are getting this part because uh, this is just simple uh, mathematics let me just also draw it so if you have two arrays like this let's say this is one array and this is two ar the second array so what is happening here is the size of array 1 is 3 so when k is 0 it will be stored here when k is uh, 1 it will be stored here when k is 2 it will be stored here but when k becomes 3 it should be stored in array 2 which position in array 2 k minus n so this is just an offset for k because now the value of k will be 3 but i want to it to be stored in position 0 so the value of n is 3 so 3 minus 3 will become 0 so it will be stored in this particular position 
Now, when it becomes 4, 4 minus 3 will be 1. So, it will be stored in this particular position and so on till this particular array gets filled. Now, you see what I am doing is instead of using a temporary array, I am using the same two arrays to store the value which was in earlier stored in a temporary array. Right. It's just that I am not touching this x1 number. I am storing it in bits 30 to 54. Right. We will discuss it how we will do it. But for now, just uh, like understand this part that instead of touching these, these bits, I am not touching them, I am le leaving them as it is. I am storing all the bits in this particular part from bits 30 to 54. Right. This is how I will be storing the values without using a temporary array in the same two arrays. Right. And you, need to, and you need to understand this part that if k is less than n, I am going to store it in array of 1 and the position will be k itself. Otherwise, I am going to store it in array of 2 and the position will be k minus n. Right. So, this is how all of it is working. Now comes the second part. We know that we are going to store this value. We know that it is going to be stored, how it is going to be stored. But now the question is, how do we actually manipulate the bits to store these values? Let's say I have some value of array of i, array of i and let's say it is x and I want to store it in array 2 of let's say 2, right? So, I want to store this x value in this particular position, right? So, you see each array element will have two values x1 and x2. I don't want to touch x1 but I want to store this new value in position x2. So, what I will do is I left shift, I will left shift x 30 times, right? So, whatever value is in x will be left shifted 30 times. So, what will happen is let's say x was initially 0, 1, 0 like this. So, this was position 0, this was position 1, 2 and 3, right? So, when I left shift it 30 times, 0 will come here at position 30 and then 1 will come here and then 0 and then 1, right? So, this will be position 30, 31, 32 and 33, right? This is how the new x will look like and all of the remaining bits to the right of it will be 0, right? So, now what I do is I want to store this new value of x in array 2 of 2. So, I will do array 2 of 2 or bitwise or with x. So, what it will essentially do is it will take bitwise or since these values are 0, whatever value was earlier present at the position of x1 will be copied because I am taking bitwise or and all the position from the u value from these positions will also be copied because I am taking bitwise or. So, now finally this position array 2 of 2 will be having all the original elements from 0 to 24 position and all the new modified elements from 30 to 54 position. So, this is how I am going to store the elements. But there is one very big problem with this particular approach and that is now whenever I want to retrieve my element, let's say I want to, to find out what is the original value in array 2 of 2, right? I have modified this value but, I not, but now I want to find out what was the original value that was present here. I cannot find it directly because this value is now modified. So, what I will instead do is I will create a mask or I can call it base. I have written it as base in my code but you can also call it a mask. So, what is the what will be the value of this mask? The value of this mask will be 1 25 times. The mask will be nothing will be just a series of 25 ones in binary. So, this will be from 0, 1, 2 and so on up to 24, right? So, all of these will be ones. Whenever I want to retrieve the original value, I will take this mask. Let's say I want to retrieve the original value of array 2 of 2, right? So, I can find it as, let's say it is y, I can find it as array 2 of 2 bitwise and mask. So, what it will do is all of these remaining values will be 0. So, all of these values will be discarded no matter what they are and all of these values from 0 to 24 are 1. So, whatever is present at these position will be copied into my y. Right, because I am taking bitwise and since I, it is already 1 here, if it was 0 in the original number, it will become 0. If it is 1 here, if it was 1 in the original number, it will also become 1. Right, so this is how I can retrieve the values from the modified array values. So, now I have learned how to retrieve the values. Now I have learned how to store the values. The rest remaining part is very simple. You just need to perform the merging part of a simple merge sort operation. Right. So, all of this will become very, very clear when you have a look at the code. So, let me just show you my code, what I have done. So, initially I have taken three variables i, j and k and all of them are initialized to 0. I have initialized my base with 1. 
and I am setting the value of base. So you will see I am running this loop 24 times and at each time I am left shifting the base by 1 and I am adding 1 to my base. So this will create this simple for loop will create a series of 25 ones, right? 25 ones in binary form which will be together. Now what I do is I create a simple while loop. So this is just exactly as much sort. I create a variable called new value which I am going to assign to my array elements. So first I need to find out what is the original value that was present at those positions. So I do array 1 of i bitwise and with base and array 2 of i bitwise and with base. Right. Now if x is less than y, I set the new value as x left shift 30. So you remember when I, when I was setting the value, I need to left shift the number by 30. It is not exactly 30. Right. You can also take some other number. Just make sure that the bits do not coincide and each element has sufficient number of bits. So 30 was a suitable number for me. So I just made it x left shift 30. And if I'm using the element from array 1, I need to increment i. Right. So this is just some simple merge sort logic. Now, otherwise what I do is I set the new value as y let shift 30 and I increment j. Now if k is less than n, I'm going to store this value in array 1 of k. Right. And I'm going to take bitwise or with new value. Since I have to update my k variable as well after storing this value, I am just doing post increment here only, right. Similarly, uh, if I store it in array 2, I have to store it in array 2 of k minus n and I have to take bitwise or with new value. And since I have to update k as well, later on, I am just doing post increment here, right. Now similarly, if I have executed for both i and j, I have to make a simple while loop for i and j separately because one of them might have got exhausted here and the other one might still have some values. So y i is less than n, I calculate the new value as array 1 of i and base and left shift 30. So I have combined these two operations here in one operation only. And since I have to increment i later on, I'm just doing post increment. So this part is exactly same as here. It is just the same part copied and pasted. And uh, similarly here, while j is less than m, I calculate the new value as array 2 of j and base left shift 30. So let me repeat this part again. I'm, I'm taking array 2 of j and since my array 2 of j might have been modified, I need to take a mask so that I can get the original value of array 2 of j. So that is why I take bitwise and with base value. Now I want to store it in some, some other position. Since I cannot use the starting bits, I'm going to left shift this part whole number by 30 times so that I can use the remaining bits on the left half of the binary number. Right. So this is what is happening in this whole line. And since I have to increment j later on anyways, so I'm just incrementing it here only using post increment. And this part you must have already understood. If k is less than n, I have to store it in array 1. Otherwise, I have to store it in array 2. Just You just need to take care that if I'm storing it in array 1, I can directly use k. Otherwise, I can use k minus n. And for both of those cases, I have to take bitwise or with new value. Now, now for the final part, when I have completed all of these steps, now my final answer values will be stored in bits number 30 to 54, right? Now to retrieve them, I can just right shift all of those values by 30 times. So what will happen is those numbers starting from 30 to 54 will come to the initial position starting from zero if I right shift it 30 times. So that is what is happening here. For all the array elements in array 1 and array 2, I have done the same thing. So I can just submit this and show you that this particular approach works. So the code looks a little bit lengthy, but uh, the approach is very, very simple. It's not that difficult. The code looks and uh, you see that it passes all the test cases and this approach is absolutely correct. And the biggest of all, it works in O of n plus m. It does not use this log n uh, logarithmic factor, right? So that's it for today. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe later if you don't find the videos interesting. So share this channel with your friends and until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye.